So hello, welcome back to Go Again Gaming. This is just going to be a random talking head video, more thought-provoking things about heroes, characters in games. Before we go into it, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the little bell notification if you want to be notified of any future videos here on Go Again Gaming. There is no real upload schedule, it's just releasing things as and when I want to. This video is all going to be about heroes and characters and the importance of them. Now, there's going to be a lot of flesh and blood references here because that's the main game that we cover on this channel and the one that we are probably the most involved with at this point. Although there are going to be other videos and other games being uh, being showcased on here in the future. First of all, characters and heroes are very, very important to any game going forward, I believe. Especially because I think a lot of people that play games are looking for an escape. They're looking for a world to lose themselves in after the day job, right? After the grind, after the sort of perpetual rat race that we all find ourselves in. A lot of us just want to escape into a game and use it as a way to relax, a way to escape, a way to just get away from the things that we that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I know I'm definitely one of those people. I play games to socialise, I play games to chill out, I play games to have fun, and uh, that's exactly what I achieve out of them as well. Uh, that is the goal for me. But heroes and characters and stories, all of these things do really help a game, do really, really help a new independent property. But, uh, characters and, and heroes that people can gravitate towards from the off, from the very, very start. Flesh and Blood uh, is a trading card game, if you don't know, that has a winning formula with regards to this because it is a hero-centric game. You choose a hero, you choose a character. In RPGs and Baldur's Gate and all of this stuff that's blowing up at the moment, you create a character, you choose a hero to play. And not only that, but you also have a load of other characters in the background that you can gravitate towards and explore their stories. Baldur's Gate, for instance. I mean, this conversation is going to go all over the place. There's no sort of, you know, clarity here. If Is that even a word? Correlation is the word I was looking for. But in Baldur's Gate, for instance, obviously you create your own hero, which is great. But there's also a load of these other characters in the background that you absolutely love. Shadowheart is obviously a fan favourite at the moment. Um, and I played the hell out of Baldur's Gate 3 because I absolutely loved Shadowheart and I loved my character interacting with her and romancing her, obviously. But when we got to the end of Shadowheart's story, I was like, do I want to play this anymore? Do, do I really care about this? And now that's a good thing and a bad thing, right? So heroes, if you get attached to someone and then their story ends, where do you go from there? So it's an interesting point straight away, and, and, and an interesting debate is, is there a hero issue? And we've covered this in in um, the Living Legends podcast, but more on a mechanical flesh and blood basis. But is a hit is having a hero, um, having a hero based game an issue? Because after your hero reaches the end of their arc, or after their hero uh, is not no longer playable, or if they finish their story, or whatever, whatever context you want to use, when the hero comes to the end of their journey, what happens then? What? How do you sort of then identify with a new hero? You know, go down that same journey again, get attached to a character only for them to go go into the aether at a later stage. Um, so I think heroes are very very important. They have some massive pros and some massive cons, as I mentioned there. And that's just a random thought off the top of my head. But I also think heroes are extremely important for the health of a casual game and someone that's looking to escape, as I mentioned to begin with. Heroes will allow anybody to just identify with something in your independent property from the off. From the very start of Flesh and Blood, I was invested in characters. And that is one of the main things that keeps people engaged, right? People that have played other games, uh, RPGs, and people that have come from other backgrounds will gravitate towards the character that they feel like they have a good experience with prior or the aesthetics maybe remind them of something else, or maybe they even see a part of themselves in that character. Um, for me, with Flesh and Blood, for instance, I gravitated towards Viserai from the very, very start. Now, hopefully there might be an image flashed up here of Viserai, this sort of warlocky, purple energy, just brooding, mysterious figure. And I absolutely loved that. I loved that sort of aesthetic, that flavour of the dark, brooding character, the dark, brooding male character, right? 
always loved people like Squall Leonhart and Cloud Strife when I was growing up playing Final Fantasy. And then as I grew, in, grew into sort of metal music and hardcore and all this, that sort of vibe really came across with Viserai. And I also loved the hybrid fact that he was using a sword and magic at the same time. So again, all of my background, all of my stuff was gravitating me towards Viserai to begin with. And then I discovered Azalea because I absolutely love ranger characters and sort of people that were brought up in the down and the dirty and the people that are sort of doing dark deeds in order to just further themselves and survive. I have a tale of survival, of adversity growing up. I was never a good-looking person. I was never a, uh, you know, a sportsman or anything like that. So I always got picked on in school. And, you know, we, I'm sure a lot of us in, in our backstories have had that same sort of, that same sort of tale. And Azalea is, is one of those people that sort of give you that side of it as well. The whole sort of growing up in squalor. Uh, and dealing with all the crap all the time, and uh, and then coming out the other end as an absolute badass, and someone that's sexy as hell wearing all that leather, you know? Um, but um, that's the great thing about characters and stories and heroes and stuff, is that you can automatically, if there's a new game that comes out, right, you can normally automatically gravitate towards a certain character if it's about character selection or character creation. If there is a if there is a way where you can create or get in the shoes of a character that you can relate to from the off, I think you've got a winning formula. And Flesh and Blood has definitely proven that to be the case because there's a lot of people that swear by certain heroes, certain characters, me being one of them, I absolutely love Azalea, I'm not a competitive player in the Flesh and Blood TCG, but I absolutely love Azalea and everything about it, and I think a lot of people know that I that I, that I love her, you know, um, and it's just one of those things that will keep bringing people back to the game and keeping people invested if you continue to expand that character's story. Now, in video games and stuff, you can't really do this because, well, you, I guess you can with expansions and stuff, but I think in a card game, you have that ability to chop and change what you're doing, and Flesh and Blood have, have de demonstrated that they, they have the ability to chop and change what their model or what their sort of strategy is with certain characters or releases or what have you. Um, and the demi-hero ability... Uh, again, there's going to be a lot of Flesh and Blood references in here, is an example of character arcs and character development. Demi Heroes were a new card type that were released in Dust Till Dawn with Leviah. Um, and now, similar uh, similar to that, we have the Teklo Vossen, Meklo Vossen suit that's come out in Bright Lights. But what this allows players to uh, or allows the company to do really is explore their hero in different ways by giving them a sort of second second wind ability towards the end of the game um, and I think the more that the Flesh and Blood uh, TCG do this the better it's going to be and I think it also opens up the door uh, for just characters evolving naturally and having an arc right having a having a different way to play them and all this and I think it's great because obviously it sort of ties in with the story of the character as well and that again is a big payoff for people that are invested in the character's story in the character's lore um, and Having these arcs in games for characters is is just absolutely awesome. It gives you the sense that the Flesh and Blood company, LSS, Legend Story Studios, do care about the development and the ongoing story and arc of the characters that you know and love. So I think that is just an absolute slam dunk with the introduction of the Demi-Hero. And, uh, and I think that we're going to see a lot of fan favourites and a lot of characters in the future get that Demi-Hero treatment as well to signify a big change in that character's story, which I think is going to be absolutely pivotal to certain characters as well, for sure. Maybe Azalea is even going to get one. I'd love to spoil that card, LSS, if you're watching this. Um, but, um, but yeah, characters, stories, heroes, very, very integral to any game going forward. Any sort of fantasy world is going to be filled with these characters that you gravitate towards for whatever reason. Um, and if you look at other games as well that come that come before this, if you look at Magic the Gathering's most popular format, you look at Commander. What is Commander? Commander is where you choose a hero, you choose a character that you like, whether that's based on the aesthetics, whether that's based on the colour of the deck, whether that's based on the ability of the, of the hero. You choose a hero and you build your whole deck, your whole strategy, your whole world around that one hero. 
and you play with it. It's just a winning formula. Characters are everything in games. Um, now, there's a lot of people that play Flesh and Blood competitively, and that's fair enough. It's a great game for that. That every card has a mode and all this. You know, we've heard that a lot of times before. There's no dead cards in Flesh and Blood per se. But I think the biggest thing that Flesh and Blood has going for it, and any game for that matter, is characters. Characters and world and story building. It's a huge part of any game and it's a huge way of getting people in and retaining those people, even if they don't play hyper competitively. The world and the characters are the things that will keep people around and they are the things that will ultimately get people into your game as well. If there is a character that people can identify with straight off the bat, your IP is winning. Um, and uh, back back in those days when I when I discovered Flesh and Blood, it was only Crucible of War, Arcane Rising, and Welcome to Wraith when I discovered it. Um, so we didn't have any, we didn't have any of the Monarch heroes. Uh, we only had uh, Crucible, uh, Welcome to Wraith, and Arcane Rising. So that's why obviously I sort of gravitated towards Viserai and Azalea from Arcane Rising. Absolutely love that set. Probably one of my favourite sets to date still because obviously it has our supreme leader in it. Um, but um, yeah. I've probably missed a few things as to why this is so important, but I just wanted to get that out there today um, because it's just random thoughts. This is what my channel is all about, just random thoughts as and when they enter into my head. And I just thought that heroes, characters are just so important for a myriad of different reasons. And uh, I'm sure you probably agree with me as well. But if you don't, leave a comment in the section below. What do you think is the most important aspect of any game? Whether that's tabletop game, video game, card game. What do you think? Leave a comment in the section below as to what you feel the most important part of any game is to nail from the off what is it. Thank you very much. Please make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification for any uh, updates on the channel and all this, and consider checking out my Patreon. Thank you very much to all the patrons of the channel who continuously make my day better, and you're all fantastic. Join the Discord. You're all in there. I love you all. Thank you very much, and uh, yeah, we'll see you to do it all over again very, very soon here on Go Again Gaming. That is it. I better go to work now. Cheers.